Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Hey guys, what's with the long faces? Our headphones are broken and we can't listen to our new music. And since we bought our new music, we can't afford new headphones. That is a problem, but actually you can probably build your own headphones using stuff you have around your house. Really? really? Absolutely, but first we gotta understand how speakers work. Many speakers use electromagnetism to work. You may recall the last time we talked about electromagnetism was when we talked about motors. When electricity flows through a wire, it creates a magnetic field. In the case of motors, that magnetic field can interact with magnets to make a coil of wire spin. In the case of speakers, we still have a coil of wire with electricity flowing through it, but in the case of speakers, that coil of wire interacts with a magnet to create vibrations. Check out this speaker. Down here in the base of the speaker is a strong magnet, as you can see by the way the paper clips behave around it. Inside the base is a coil of wire that extends to these wires here, which I'm hooking up to a frequency generator. The frequency generator sends electric pulses to the coil, which is also attached to the paper cone. Each pulse causes the coil to briefly create a magnetic field that attracts it to the magnet, creating vibrations in the speaker. Changes to the strength and duration of the electric pulse causes the cone to vibrate differently, which creates the various sounds you hear when listening to music. You may note that I've said most speakers. Some speakers, especially the really tiny ones like in these earbuds, actually use the piezo effect to work. But we'll save that for another episode. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. To make a speaker, you'll need a paper cup, sandpaper, tape, magnet, and enameled wire, where you can find at your local hardware store. Both ceramic and rare earth magnets will work. Sheet magnets, your typical refrigerator magnets, usually won't. The stronger the magnet, the better your speaker will work. But remember, strong magnets can be dangerous, so use caution when handling them. First step is to make a wire coil of about 20 to 25 wraps. We're wrapping it around this battery to help. The key is that it needs to fit into the bottom of the paper cup. Next, let's use a little tape to hold the coil together, then sandpaper the ends to remove the enamel and expose the wire. Tape the coil to the bottom of the cup. Then tape the magnet to the bottom of the cup in the center of the wire coil. Wait, that's it? Pretty much, your paper cup acts as your paper cone, you have your coil of wire and a magnet. That's pretty much all the speaker is. But how do you hook it up to the player? Oh, that's a good point. We do have one more step, I guess. Making a connector. Take a male male audio jack. If you don't already have one, you can get these at most stores that sell electronics and cut it in half. Strip the insulation, you'll find this. Two insulated wires and a mass of bare wires. Because it is a stereo wire, each of the insulated wires relates to a different speaker and the bare wires are shared by both speakers. So, to connect it to one speaker, just twist the bare wires together and wrap them around one end of the coil. Then, strip the two insulated wires, twist them together, and attach them to the other end of the coil. So, all you have to do is plug the jack into your frequency generator and... Now, I've also made a slightly fancier jack set up here so I can hook up two of our cup speakers. Then all you have to do is add a little paper strip and... Okay, so they won't win any fashion awards, but you gotta admit, they kinda rock. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.